So here's a nice case. We'll start with the PA and lateral radiograph. So here at the institution that I work at, we do dual energy imaging for the PA radiograph, which allows us to get these images which are optimized for soft tissues as well as lung, as well as an image which is optimized for the bones, which I've really gotten used to. I really like this. Sometimes abnormalities are much more obvious on these dual energy images than the regular standard PA radiograph. So let's go through this. This is actually a pretty subtle finding. Um, I think most chest radiologists would probably see this by, and probably most skilled board certified radiologists would see this as well. But if we look at the media stadium, it looks like the right paratracheal stripe is just a little bit too thick here. Not even a little bit, this is, it's too thick. And if you look very, very carefully, and this sort of, you know, this is sort of like with a retro spectroscope, because I already know what the CT looks like, to, to be honest, there's a little convexity here. And so this, this is going to be in the AP window. So there's a little bit of convexity here. This really shouldn't be convex at all. And we see this abnormality. So in this young woman, so she was, um, she's in her uh, early 30s. Really, we don't expect to see any convexity here. This should really be uh, flat, if not a little bit concave. Also in the left hilar region, if we window it, maybe there's a little bit of abnormal convexity here, maybe inferiorly, but certainly down here, it looks like there's convexity and a little bit of just general fullness. Sometimes when you put into the soft tissue, optimized image, so the dual energy image, the areas of fullness or soft tissue abnormal in the hilum become a little bit more apparent. And so here, maybe, maybe the, the convexity is brought out a little bit. If we mag out, look at the whole lungs using symmetry as our friend, we'll see that there's a little bit of asymmetry here in the upper aspect of the right lung. So I think subtle, but if we compare the two sides, maybe if we put it into the soft tissue optimized image, I think it does bring it out. Clearly, there's a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of interstitial opacities here in the upper aspect of the right lung that we don't see in the left lung. The lateral, lateral doesn't look that exciting. I would, I would expect to see some abnormality here given the way the media stem looked on the PA view, but not too bad. Maybe, so there is a little convexity here in the infrahylar window. So we shouldn't see anything convex in the infrahylar window. Obviously you can see vessels, linear things going through there, but you shouldn't see any convexity. And there is something that looks generally convex uh, in that area. So for example, in here, so a little convex, I think subtle, it's a subtle finding. And, and some, someone accused me of perhaps looking at this after I've looked at the CT, but I, I will say that I did see, I did think there was a little bit too much convexity there even before the CT scan was um, viewed by me. Okay, so let's look at the CT now. So the CT scan shows bilateral, mild to moderate, generally symmetric mediastinal and hilar lymphadenopathy. So the, what was responsible for that right paratracheal fullness, it's this right paratracheal lymphadenopathy. We also see some lymphadenopathy in the anterior mediastinum here. Here's that lymph node within the AP window region, which was giving us that subtle convexity, just abnormal, just not normal. And then we see a little bit of left grid and right hilar lymphadenopathy, but though generally, generally, I think it's symmetric. On the lung window, we see these reticular nodule opacities within the peripheral aspect of the right lung, and that's what we're seeing on the radiograph. But there's more than that. If we look at you in the right lung more inferiorly, we see there's a little bit of reticular nodule opacities, some more nodule opacities here in the right lower lobe. So we mag up on it. You'll see that there's, it's actually a diffuse nodular lung disease, isn't this? So nice nodules in the subpleural lung, maybe even extending into the interlobular septa or along the bronchovascular tree. If we go back to the right upper lobe, again, we'll see that this is mostly actually nodularity. It looks like reticula it looks like there might be some reticulation superimposed on it. If we look very carefully, it looks like it's mostly a nodular lung disease. And if we look in the left lung, specifically the left upper lobe, we'll see that centrally, 
along this bronchovascular tree here, it has this sort of beaded appearance, like a like dirty branching. These are probably small nodules along the central bronchovascular core structure. So this is a really good look for a perilymphatic nodularity. There's a little bit of nodularity here as well within the lingula, very subtle, but it's there. So this is a good look for sarcoidosis. And this is an example of perilymphatic nodularity, maybe not as florid as some textbook cases. Again, we see a little bit of this uh, nodularity along the fissure here, but the location is certainly good for perilymphatic nodularity. So is the lymphadenopathy, so is the patient's demographic. And so just putting it all together, the most likely diagnosis here is sarcoidosis and indeed, uh, this patient was eventually shown to have sarcoidosis.